I think it's time we do something about those wheels. What do you think? In the last video, we got my cheap 2003 Cobra, a complete front end transformation, including refinishing the front splitter, new headlights, a completely custom heat exchanger, among refinishing a few other items on the front end here. Thus starting the complete cosmetic transformation of this car. Although it looks a ton better already just with a wash and a bit of a front end transformation, I can't help but discuss the elephant in the room, the wheels. The wheels on this thing probably looked okay at one point when someone put them on there, but just like every single other aspect of this car, they have fallen by the wayside and they're in need of a lot of help. So these are 18s, probably 18 by 10 or 11 in the rear, 18 by nine ish in the front. I honestly haven't even looked. I don't even think I've taken the rear wheels off the car yet. Uh, but basically it's a probably a cast, pretty cheap wheel. Uh, I can't remember what the model is. I looked it up at one point, but all the hardware is plastic and fake and completely discolored. I don't even know how that happens, but it's doesn't even look, you know, some of them are rusty, even though it's plastic. Some of them still look kind of gold. They're still really dirty, even though I washed the car because I didn't really bother to get them all that clean. They're curbed in a few spots. The front tires are Toyo proxies. I think they're like eight years old. They're dry rotted, cracked. Um, yeah, just <laughs> we can't. We can't have this on uh, on any car of mine. Rear is more of the same story. Uh, the only good thing about the rears is they have a basically brand new set of Toyo Proxies uh, 315s back here. So this is the only part of the wheel and tire setup that we are going to keep. So many, many of you have been asking in the comments, are you gonna do something about the wheels? What about the wheels? Are you keeping those wheels? Of course not. They look terrible. And I mean, we could refinish those. I actually reached out to ESR to see if they sold replacement hardware, but, and they do but that can be someone else's project. I'm scrapping these wheels. I really don't think that the black wheels in this case go with this car, or at least the mesh style wheels. So I picked out a set of wheels a few weeks ago and uh, they've been chilling in the corner of the garage. One or two of you even noticed it in the last video, but without further ado, because I got an appointment to get them mounted up tomorrow morning, let's uh, get them in front of the car, get them unboxed and uh, we'll check them out. What do you think? So 90% of you already know what these are. They are the 99 to 2004 Celine style wheels. And I have been in love with these since the day that I saw them 20 years ago, maybe more. So yeah, as the name implies, these are Celine wheels. These would have come factory on the 99 to 2004 Celine Mustangs. 18 by 10 and a half in the rear, 18 by nine in the front. I'm sorry, 18 by 10 in the rear. These are obviously replicas. The original Celine's are really hard to find, but OE Wheels does a really nice replica of the Celine style wheel. It looks exactly like the original ones. I actually had their black version on my torch red 2004 Cobra. Uh, you can see them there. I ordered them back in like 2012 and I was very pleased to see like three weeks ago that OE Wheels was still making these Celine style replica wheels. And uh, I think that a chrome set on the Sonic Blue car is absolutely gonna pop. For, for a reasonable price too, I actually, I think the wheels themselves were under just under $1,000. Uh, I'm gonna be reusing, like I said, the Toyo TQ drag, or the Toyo Proxy drag radials back there. And for the fronts, I just got some 265, 35, you know, summer compound tires. Petlas or something like that. I don't know. I run a similar one on all my Mercedes and I've, I've had really good luck with them. They're not too expensive either. 
Uh, so yeah. For budget wheels, for these cars, in my opinion, there's only a couple that really work. Uh, I would have really liked to get the 18 inch replica Cobra wheels. Uh, a company named AFS makes them and also LMR makes them, but they've been out of stock for like six months now with, I think the ETA is like June at best. So that wasn't gonna work for me. A very close second is these Celine wheels. Just another very clean five spoke design, but just like a little sportier. Very fitting for these cars. You've seen it a million times. I know it works, I know it looks good. Uh, yeah, I love the Celine wheels. So, like I said, I've got an appointment to get these mounted up tomorrow. So I need to get the car in the air, get the rear wheels at the very least off so that I can bring those with me, get all four of these in the truck, those two rear wheels in the truck, and we'll go get them mounted up. So yeah, let's get the car in the air, get those wheels off, get everything in the truck, and we'll go get them mounted in the morning. Toyo 315s are looking meaty. Next evening, and uh, today we got the wheels and tires all mounted up. No issues. I mean, the like I said, the Toyo TQs on the rear are pretty much brand new, and the front tires are brand new, and the wheels are brand new. So as you know, as expected, no problems. And uh, these are ready to go on the car, right? Right. Looks good. Just toss them on. Come on. Of course not. This wheel well area needs a lot of work before I'm putting some brand new chrome mags on this thing. There's no way we're gonna have these beautiful wheels with this disaster behind it. So this whole area needs cleaned up. As I'm looking at it, I might respray these wheel wall liners. They're looking a little ratty. That's pretty common even on low mileage cars. Just look at the yellow cover that I did about six months ago. Everything's just dirty and most importantly, these Rotors and calipers have seen better days. Rotors obviously have a visible amount of rust on them. They are drilled and slotted. Someone put them on there at one point, but they've seen better days. The pads, uh, there's a little bit of life left, but not much. Someone painted these silver, and, uh, and maybe they did a decent job at one point, but uh, it's just like the rest of the car. 
Seen better days. They also put the Cobra in black there. Uh, so we're going to change that up and, you know, it needs repainted either way. There's no way we can look at that with the way the rest of this car is going to look. The rears, same story, except someone painted them blue. Not sure why there's a color difference there. Uh, this car has the solid rear axle. Someone has removed the IRS. As you guys may or may not know, depending on how long you've been following this build, this is, Cobra originally would have come with an IRS or independent rear suspension, but at some point someone swapped in a built 8.8 .8 solid rear axle. So as such, I'm almost positive these are just your factory Mustang GT brakes. Uh, someone painted them blue and uh, also drilled or slotted or dimpled rotors. I don't even know, but there's no vent in here. I've actually never seen a rotor like that before, at least... Maybe I haven't been paying attention, but anyways, I've got all new brake components for this car. I, I, you probably could clean these up, but I mean, the rotors have had it, the pads have had, pads are cheap. Like I just went on Rock Auto, Rock Auto, sponsor me, and just ordered up a complete new rotors and pads uh, for this car. So let's get those unboxed. All right, so everything's unboxed here. You got front 13 inch Cobra rotors, uh, just regular GT rotors in the rear. Our, the full kit from R1 Concepts here, uh, pads and rotors. Again, super nice kit on Rock Auto. Here's the rear pads, some hardware, good to go. So we've got all new brake hardware. Let's get all of the old crap off and uh, yeah, just go from there. Lowe's and Cobalt Tools. Warranty, Cobalt Tools. Do it the old fashioned way. Well, the brackets are over here in the paint booth next to the ESR wheels that are probably going to be on a Honda Civic, uh, probably down in Lawrence, Massachusetts within a week, but uh, they're looking pretty good. Um, went with a mix of flat black and whoa, and satin black for the brackets. I, I, on these cars and a lot of cars that have like a separate bracket from the caliper, sometimes I like to do a black bracket you know, just to kind of drive contrast between the bracket color and the caliper color. And the caliper color, I have decided to go with Old Reliable. We're doing red on this blue car, red calipers on our Sonic Blue Cobra. And I know 117 of you are in the comments right now like, why aren't you doing Sonic Blue calipers? You did the Sonic Blue valve covers, the car is Sonic Blue. Why don't you do Sonic Blue calipers? Well, I'll tell you why. I personally find that blue calipers look awesome on most cars. Trust me, I've, I did blue calipers on my E55. I did blue calipers on my 69 Camaro. I did blue calipers on my C6 Z06. 
And the reason that I want to do red on the Sonic Blue Cobra and not Sonic Blue is that I feel that dark blue calipers kind of get lost behind the wheel. They're like a dark color. Some guys, maybe you're going for that and, and that's fine, but I, something like this, I wanted it to pop. And there's nothing wrong with going with a light blue caliper like I did on my C6Z06. This is like candy blue. It's like the C6ZR1 color and it uh, really, really pops on the black. It's like a bright, like a really bright blue. So I think that works. But if you were to do that on this color, then obviously you'd have two different color blues and that would look super weird. So you can't do a bright blue and you could do sonic blue, but it, it kind of is just bleh. It's bland. In my opinion, everyone's, everyone's got their own opinion. In my opinion, sonic blue calipers on a sonic blue car, unless they're like big brakes, which these aren't, they're just stock brakes. They're just kind of there. So I'm doing red. I think red looks good on, red calipers look good on just about everything. I've got them on my E63. I've seen them on Sonic Blue cars before. I know they look good. I think they're gonna look really, really nice. So we're doing red calipers. I'm probably gonna do that thing where I, you know, paint the whole caliper red, then sand off the Cobra. So the Cobra is gonna be kind of like a polished look. And then we'll clear coat the whole thing. And then obviously the calipers back here in the rear will, will do the same thing. Everything is unboxed over here. So we've got our massive 13 inch slotted front rotors, our stock GT rear rotors, front Cobra pads, new hardware, rear GT pads and associated hardware. Uh, if you guys need any of these part numbers, I'm gonna leave them right here. Got them right from Rock Auto, just sorted obviously by Cobra for the front brakes and GT for the rear. Same thing with the pads. The pads are like a really nice R1 concept ceramic pad. So I spent a little bit of money on this setup here, but I mean, you gotta stop. So, and, the, and your stoppers gotta look good. And I think because we're junking these rotors and these pads anyways, I think I'm gonna paint the caliper right here on the rotor. The rotor will kind of hold it for me. I'll kind of maybe hold it up here somehow. Then I'll just mask everything off behind here and then I'll just paint the whole caliper and then we'll be removing the rotors, or I'm sorry, the pads, and then the rotor too. And then we'll just put our new stuff on and it'll look absolutely perfect. And it's gonna save me a bunch of time masking and you know making sure I don't get stuff all over the pads and whatnot, which, which you'd normally have to do if you're painting your calipers and not taking these pads out. So yeah, let's keep on moving. Let's get these front calipers and rear calipers prepped and painted and then clear coated and uh, see if we can start getting some of this stuff back together.
Well, it is the next evening and after a bunch of prep work, I laid down some paint last night. To start, I uh, refinished our wheel well liners and they look amazing. Except for the giant hole in the passenger one. Uh, this car is on stock suspension now. I think the front springs are cut just a little bit, but nowhere near low enough to make the front tires rub on the wheel well liners. I did talk to one of the previous owners and he said that at one point this car was on coilovers, at least up front. So my guess is he put it a little bit too low there, bud. And uh, she rubbed through, so I'll keep an eye out for a new one of these. Um, but in the meantime, you can't really see it once it's in the car. So it'll be okay for right now. But the paint, you guys who've had the 99 to 04 Mustangs, and I've had Super Duties like this before, basically any car with faded plastic wheel well liners, go get yourself a can of flat black spray paint. Really doesn't matter what it is, just make sure it will bond to plastic. I've used this Rust-Oleum 2X Ultra Cover stuff before and uh, had really good luck with it. I mean, they look brand new, five bucks and just lay it on. I painted last night, it was like 25 degrees outside. Came out awesome. So wheel wall liners are looking brand new. Just forget about that hole. Don't worry about that little guy. Get on all morning. How about that little fella? Oh, that little guy. I wouldn't worry about that little guy. Caliper brackets, uh, perfect satin black finish. Those things are ready to go. And finally, the calipers. Uh, laid down, I think, three or four coats of that bright red paint. And I mean, we're just, just rough, roughing it here. But look at that contrast. That's what we're going for. You got the amber on the headlights, some beautiful sonic blue paint. Boom, red caliper. Maybe a little bit of the yellow Bilstein back there. It's gonna look insane. Same thing on the rear. Uh, got a smorgasbord of uh, you know masking materials here, but we didn't get any paint on anything we didn't want to, and I got all sides of the caliper, which is what we're going for. Came out really good all the way around. Yeah. So you guys know the plan. Uh, up next, I'm going to mask off carefully under the Cobra, you know, up around the A, up on the top and around the C, and sand off just the face of the letters so that this will be exposed aluminum. Then I'm gonna remove the masking tape and clear coat the whole thing. That should look awesome with our satin black brackets and all of our brand new hardware, you know, rotors, pads, hardware, everything over here. Refinished wheel well liners, and then we'll put the whole package together. Should look really good. So I'm probably, because it's the middle of winter and the garage is, I keep it at like 50 degrees. I'm probably going to do the clear coat tonight, and then I'm going to have to let it cure overnight so it's fully dry before I put anything back together. But for now, let's get those calipers sanded up, get them ready, get them clear coated, get them starting to cure, and I'll see if I can maybe do some work on the rear, but let's just keep pressing forward. Let's go.
Shoo! Man, I am surgical with a rattle can. You know I'm surgical with this bitch, Jake. All right, guys, it's actually a couple days later. I uh, just got back from a little trip. Gave the calipers plenty of time to cure up, and they came out incredible. So came back and sanded off the Cobra lettering, just as I described, just quickly taped it off. I think I did 80 grit, 240 grit, and then 400 grit. You can even go farther than that if you want, but came out really, really nice. And then clear coated the whole thing. Uh, I think I did three coats of clear. So that side looks awesome. Driver's side looks awesome. And then of course, just added a little bit of clear to the rear calipers there. Speaking of the rear calipers here, you can see I've got a C-clamp on the rear caliper because I was trying to get ahead here and do the rear brakes, at least one of them, before I check back in with you guys. And uh, ran into a bunch of issues. Those rear brakes have been fighting me. First of all, you guys notice the C-clamp back there. If you've ever done brakes before, you know that you take out a pad that's thin because it's worn and you try and fit now a, a brand new or thicker pad on the caliper over the rotor it no longer fits and you have to push the piston in the caliper back into the caliper to make room usually it's not a big deal sometimes you can do it with your fingers sometimes a little c-clamp vice grips whatever you got that's what i was trying to do and uh, i must have been half asleep on friday when i was doing it because the rear brakes for a gt or these mustangs is the twist in style meaning it threads in in order to get that distance to close so you can you know, put the C-clamp on there as hard as you want till you're blue in the face like I was on Friday and it's not going to budge. You have to use the disc brake caliper tool, which is this tool right here. Basically grabs on to the piston here in these two little grooves and then twists it, which threads it back in. So finally figured that out and uh, got this thing to thread in no problem. Then went to go put the brakes back together. Everything was going good on the... Uh, driver's side over there and I was just checking some stuff out as you should when you're doing brakes and I realized that one of my slide pins was completely seized. So this is an example of a good slide pin on the bracket. Easily slides and moves no problem. Goes in and out. This was completely completely seized in there and uh, I spent like a half hour you know put this in the vise here with a hammer and a torch and PB blaster and punches and vice grips and everything else. Horribly mangled the thing, but finally got it out. Decided I should probably check the other side too. And what do you know, this one was seized too. So in the rear calipers, I had two out of the four seized caliper pins. Finally got them both out. I'm going to get everything cleaned up. Thankfully, my local Advance Auto had these in stock, believe it or not. So new slide pins and hardware. And I managed to take my time and save the boot on both of these, so I uh, don't need new boots. So I'm going to get all of this really cleaned up, new slide pins in, grease everything up, get it all back together, and we should be good to go. So, calipers are painted, everything looks good. I think I've got my debacle on the rear brakes taken care of. Front brake parts are on the bench, ready to go on. I think that we should be okay on the front. There is no caliper pins on the front setup, so I think we should be good there. Fingers crossed. So yeah, let's keep the progress going. Let's get these brakes 100% assembled and finally see what these beautiful chrome wheels look like with the red brakes behind them on our Sonic Blue Cobra. Let's go.
Man, what a transformation. If we compare how this wheel well and just everything here looked like just a little while ago, with just a couple new parts, some paint, and a little bit of elbow grease, we've completely transformed not only the brakes, but just this wheel well area in general. It looks so much better. And the wheels aren't even on the car yet, and I can already tell you I'm so happy I went with red instead of like a blue or something. I mean, it just pops. It really, really looks good. Fronts are all done. New 13 inch, I believe, slotted rotors, brand new pads, all painted caliper, bracket, all new hardware. Cleaned up wheel well liner. Gave everything in here, quick wipe down. Looks nice and clean, nice and tidy. Same thing on this side, looks really, really nice. And of course, same thing on the rear here, got that all tidied up. So I think we are ready to put these beautiful 18 inch Celine wheels on, but there's one final detail I'd like to do before I get them on. You'll notice I've got the center cap out on this one, and you'll notice on this one, this is what the standard center cap looks like from OE wheels. It's got like a eagle or something on it. OE racing, which looks all right, but it just doesn't really fit the rest of the car, or the stock SVT center caps would fit in these, but I don't have them. By the way, uh, those ESR wheels, like two days ago when I filmed and claimed that they would go to Lawrence and probably end up on a Honda Civic, I shit you not, I put them on Facebook Marketplace and one hour later, some kids drove up from Lawrence in a Honda Accord coupe. Okay, so it went on Accord instead of a Civic, but, and just took them away. Like I knew those wheels we're gonna end up on a Honda somewhere. It's just, I don't like to stereotype with wheels, but anyways, ESRs are gone and we got these Celines to go in their place. But yeah, center caps. Look at this. Looks just like an original SVT center cap, right? Well, it's actually a vinyl sticker that went on the original OE racing or OE wheels center cap. I did the exact same thing on my 04 way back in the day because that car also didn't come with the original wheels when I bought it in 2012. It came with a set of like bullets on it or something. So I had a buddy who was used to be in the vinyl cutting business make me a set of SVT center cap stickers and uh, it was a good solution for a lot of us guys that were getting wheels like this but didn't have the factory SVT center caps. He's not in the business anymore, but he had one set left that he was willing to send me. So thank you, Mooch, for sending me the center cap decals there. That'll save us a couple of bucks instead of getting the original SVT center caps that you know would still pop in. Also, almost forgot to mention that there's no way we we're putting on these nasty, appears to be chrome lugs that someone spray painted black. So those can stay in the scrap pile with all the extra brake stuff. Got some brand new chrome lugs, shiny, sparkle, sparkle, to go with our new Celine wheels. Yeah, I would like to get these vinyl stickers on, get these wheels and tires on this thing, get it on the ground and see what we're dealing with. What does this thing look like? We already know it's gonna look good, but let's, uh, let's get it done.
Man, does this thing look sharp. Love it, I'm absolutely in love. Like I said, you cannot go wrong with the 18 inch Celines. But uh, unfortunately, it's the next day and it's already dark out, been working on some other stuff. Uh, so I'm not gonna give you guys the full reveal just yet, but don't wanna waste this time either. Uh, so we're gonna shift our attention to the trunk uh, just briefly for, uh, I don't know, hopefully a pretty quick project tonight. So if we come back to the trunk, it's a little bit of a mess, but uh, I've been stashing some parts back here. And I talked about these in the last video, or no, actually, it was the, yeah, it was the heat exchanger video. So yeah, that was the last video on this car. Let me just get them out here so you can see them. So if we take a look back here in the trunk, get my light on there so everyone can see, take out this little spare tire thing, it covers what would be the spare tire. Here's the trunk, and uh, this has not changed since I bought the car, other than I've been stashing some extra parts and stock parts in here. So this is basically how we started when I first bought this car. I thought that these looked like coffee beans down here, but everyone else is telling me that it's actually probably, you know, rat doo-doo. I don't really have rats where I live, so never really seen it before, but look at that one. Tell me that's not a coffee bean. I'm throwing that in the Cuisinart tomorrow morning and making a fresh pot. If I die, you guys will never see this video. Don't do that. Don't put rat poop in your coffee maker. It's crazy I have to say that as a disclaimer, but it's the world we live in. Yeah, so my biggest gripe with the back here was there was no, the panels that you know hide the wheel wells were completely missing. Also, I could probably clean up the... Uh, Kenny Bell boost the pump wiring a little bit here. I mean, it's not too complex, but I could probably tighten up that screw a little bit, maybe firm this up, and then um, obviously clean all this out and save all these zip ties. Those are good. Give it a quick vacuum. And you guys saw that I power washed the spare tire cover, so that is in much better condition now. That's pretty much ready to go back in. And boom, look what I picked up. I found a guy uh, about 45 minutes north of me that was parting out a V6 Mustang and obviously or maybe not so obviously but the rear trunk panels are going to be exactly the same from a V6 to a Cobra to a Mach 1 to a GT whatever it is I don't even remember I think it was like a month and a half ago I think I picked these up for 30 bucks 35 bucks and uh, they're in nice shape they're a little dirty but I just power washed them and scrubbed them when I did that thing so these are ready to go in so Hoping to knock out the trunk once and for all right now. We can get it cleaned up, clean up some of that Kenny Bell wiring, give it a quick vacuum, get these panels in, get the spare tire cover on there, and uh, get it all neat and tidy, and hey, we'll call the trunk done.
Hard to argue with results like that. What did I tell you? Didn't I tell you the chrome 18 inch Celine wheels are slam dunk every single time? Told you. Well guys, it's the next morning. Uh, I apologize for once again being in the garage, but you probably couldn't tell on video, but the temperature dropped 35 degrees overnight and subsequently the wind picked up about 45 miles an hour. So it's 15 degrees and 45 mile an hour winds and uh, my hands froze almost immediately just filming for 30 seconds out there. So, but I wanted you guys to see the wheels outside, see the car outside, really drink it all in, see the whole package. I mean, the car speaks for itself. What a difference. The wheels always make the car and this is no exception. The chrome, chrome wheels, red brakes, blue paint, ugh. Oh. Just works, man. Looks awesome. The car's filthy. Still looks awesome. But uh, yeah, what a transformation in this video, guys. Just a little bit of work. Not bad. So yeah, I think that's going to do it for this one, guys. We finally got rid of those not really fitting ESR wheels that were not in great shape. Got some brand new chrome mags on this thing. Really got this car looking the way that it should. And uh, the exterior transformation, she's coming along, looking pretty good, but there's still a lot to do, both on the exterior and you know a couple more mechanical things to do. So that list is still a little bit long, so there's still plenty of work to do. Gonna get right to work on that right now. Actually got started on it last night, so I'm already working on the next video, but if you guys enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up. Thank you as always for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. My hands are frozen. Whew. Time to go warm up.